So we're talking about Earth's uh, magnetic field and how this magnetic field is tilted a little bit with respect to the axis. The question is, where's the magnetic field come from? The current idea of how we get the magnetic field is the dynamo effect. Uh, I described the dynamo effect er in an earlier lecture about planets in general. Earth's dynamo effect occurs uh, in part because the core is rotating, it's electrically conducting, and because it's electrically conducting, as it's rotating, uh, just a tiny bit of turbulence or friction in the core produces a static charge, and that static charge, as Earth rotates, produces an uh, electric current. That acts like a giant electromagnet, and so that produces this magnetic field, the dynamo effect. Uh, and so, uh, so th this is what's going on here. Now, the key, so the key to this whole thing is the outer core of the Earth, and the outer core of the Earth is liquid. If it were not liquid, you would not get the turbulence, you would not the convection, you would not get the uh, electrical current through there, and you would not get a magnetic field. It has to be liquid, and it has to be electrically conducting. It is liquid. It is made of not just liquid. It is made of liquid iron and nickel, which are electrical conductors. And so that allows you to have this dynamo effect in there. So as Earth rotates, then the, the, the entire planet rotates. Now, here's the really interesting thing, and that is as the seismic waves go through the interior of the Earth, they go through this inner core also, and they're Doppler shifted a little bit by the rotation of the inner core. So on the other side of the Earth over here, we're picking them up and we're realizing that the inner core actually rotates at a very tiny bit different speed than the outer core. Well, remember, the outer core is liquid, so it can shear a little bit and allow that to happen. And so it turns out that tidal forces are slowing the outermost portion of the Earth. The inner core uh, drags behind a little bit. And so it's that shear in there that's producing the static charge, that's producing the electricity, which, which gives you the dynamo effect that makes the Earth's magnetic field actually quite a bit stronger than it would be otherwise. Well, we find out that it's the tidal forces of the moon that are pulling on Earth, which is slowing the rotation of the outer part of the Earth. If the moon were not there, it is possible Earth's magnetic field would be weaker than it currently is. And so that's a very interesting sort of, of development right there. Uh, uh, that magnetic field, we're going to find out, protects us from a lot of, of radiation from space. And so it's very important that it be as strong as it is. Well, the inner core actually processes and wobbles a little bit. Turbulence in here also changes the magnetic field. So the magnetic field actually shifts its orientation slightly. So it changes where it points in space, which means if you make a map of where the geographic poles are, the geographic poles will shift over time. So back a number of years ago, 1900, the ge geographic pole, uh, North Pole, was actually in northern Canada somewhere, which means in some places in far, far northern Alaska, your compass would point towards the east and toward, toward the north. In fact, in places here in northern Canada, your compass would sometimes point slightly south instead of north. And so made for navigation kind of kind of complicated. But it's been gradually drifting a little bit over time. Now, it has substantially sped up the rate of drift uh, through the uh, 21st century. Okay. In the south, the magnetic pole, the, the uh, south, uh, southern geomagnetic south pole was in, was in Antarctica, and it's been drifting, so it's actually drifting out into the uh, ocean a little bit and so uh, uh, in, into the South Pacific. And so there's been this shift in the magnetic field of the Earth. And that's partly due to the inner core and the outer core shifting a little bit, the inner core in particular. So that means that this magnetic declination shifts over time. And so that means that 
you know, at one time, you know, a compass might point slightly east of north, then it points north, then it points west of north, and then, and so it shifts back and forth over time. You need to keep track of that. So if you need to know, for navigation purposes, what is this, you know, magnetic declination, you need to go look at it, you know, on a regular basis. So it does shift around a little bit. So here's a graphic right here that shows the shifting of the magnetic declination. So there's lines there. They tell you what the magnetic declination is, and you can see it's shifting over time. And as it gradually shifts, then that means that compasses no longer point in the exact direction that they're supposed to point, and that needs to be adjusted for. And interestingly enough, you know, back in the early days of navigating, uh, uh, the the zero of declination ran right through through Europe, and then uh, in the early days of sail here, 1700s, 1800s, you know, it was quite large, and now it's drifting back closer to zero. And so th this kind of gives you a, a graphic of how that, that changed. So navigators, if you're actually going to use compass for navigating, you need to know what this declination